In this video, we are going to do a Bible study of Psalm 107, 29 and Jeremiah 31, 25. Let's start with Psalm 107, 29. So as before, I have um, journaled my notes and I'm gonna read those two in a moment. But here's what I have that I want to preserve and stick together. So I think I'm gonna fold this. And what I'm going to do is this band came in the kit and it's a little bit too big if you look at it that way, but I'd like to make it like a side tuck. So I am going to trim it and then I'm going to uh, corner round it again so that it matches the top. There we go. Let's put some edging back on it. And then I'm going to attach that. And I thought, wouldn't this be fun? So I've got these two really pretty um, circles. And I thought that would be the decoration. And I won't glue them to here. And then that way I can just tuck everything underneath. So let's do that. That's my little plan. Okay, here, i got to remember now. See, I was just going to do it. I have to remember that only half of that gets the glue. So I'm going to put that one on first. Whoops. It's only there. I made sure there's no glue. Same with this one. So the glue goes there. And let's see. It's going to be right there. I just love these um, little scenes. They're so pretty. They just make me calm and relaxed when I look at that. So what we're gonna do is we are going to put glue at the bottom, glue up this part and up across the top so that things don't come flying out when I turn the pages. All right, and then that leaves us room to slightly lift that up, which I have to be careful because the glue's drying, right? To slip these things right in there. Did I leave enough space? Yeah, I did. Okay, so that's what that one's going to look like. Let's stop and do a Bible study for Psalm 107.29. The first thing that I wanted to talk about is the context of this uh, this Bible verse. It is a hymn of thanksgiving and it celebrates God's deliverance. And I wanted to go back and read you a couple of lines because as I always say, be careful taking something out of context. So the actual verse that we're studying is, he stilled the storm to a whisper. The waves of the sea were hushed. Okay, that, that sounds pretty cool, right? But unless you understand the context of, was this happening to somebody? Yes, that's the key. So if we go back to uh, verse 23, right? This is 29. It says, others went out on the sea in ships. They were merchants on the mighty waters. They saw the works of the Lord, his wonderful deeds in the deep. For he spoke and stirred up a tempest that lifted high the waves. They mounted up to the heavens and went down to the depths. In their peril, their courage melted away because they were relying on themselves, right? They reeled and staggered like drunken men. They were at their wits end. Then they cried out to the Lord in their trouble and he brought them out of their distress. He stilled the storm to a whisper. The waves of the sea were hushed. They were glad when it grew calm and he guided them to their desired haven. Let them give thanks to the Lord for his unfailing love and his wonderful deeds for men. Let them exalt him in the assembly of the people and praise him in the council of the elders. I would encourage you to go read this entire psalm. It's a really powerful one because it starts with give thanks to the Lord for he is good. His love endures forever. And so now do you understand why this is important to see he stilled the storm. But when did he still the storm? when they finally said, uh-oh, we can't survive this. We don't know how to move this boat. We don't know how to get out of it. Uh-oh, now we're gonna now we're gonna call on God. Isn't that so like us? Don't we do that all the time? Well, I think I can handle this. I can make this work. 
then you realize, ah, uh, you can't. And by the time you realize that, you're in such turmoil. So uh, that was the context, and that's why I wanted to read ahead um, for you. And then let's look at he stilled. So that in, in what it's talking about there is God's power over nature. I mean, think that through. They're in this like hurricane, let's say, and he stilled it. He just calmed that storm down to a whisper. He, he has power over nature and chaotic circumstances. That storm represents the turmoil and fear that is in our lives and is brought to a gentle whisper by God's command. Only if we reach out to him and ask him, right? So then the next part, the waves of the sea were hushed. Well, the waves symbolize the overwhelming challenges and anxieties that can flood our lives. God's intervention brings peace. And that peace that the waves of the sea were hushed, it kind of represents the tranquility and rest that God gives us in the midst of our life storms. But how do we get that? We have to reach out and call upon him. He's the one that can do this. So how does this verse speak about rest and relaxation? As I told you, I'm going to say that every single time. So basically, it talks about divine intervention. Here we go again. I think we're getting a theme, right? That true rest and relaxation comes from recognizing and experiencing God's intervention in our lives, just like those sailors in that boat during a hurricane. He can bring peace to our personal storms. So we have to trust in God's power to still the storms, which allows us then to find peace amidst chaos. The other thing that this verse talks about is God's sovereignty. So it, this helps us to understand his sovereignty. Well, what is sovereignty? You might be asking me. That is having supreme power or authority. So when we recognize his sovereignty, it helps me to rest in his control over all circumstances, knowing that he can quiet any storm in my life. That reassures me, and then it alleviates my fears. So what I did then, I took the postcard, and I decided I'm going to write it, because we talked about one of the applications can be write it out in your own words. So I did that. He stilled the storm to a whisper. The waves of the sea were hushed. So the third part of this verse is cry out to God. The sailors cried out to God in their distress. They sought God's help. When I turn to him in my need, then his peace comes into my life. So what applications could we do? Well, first we can pray, right? And we can surrender, <laughs> recognizing I can't calm this ship or this whatever you know analogy you have. We can cry out to him. And then as we cry out to him in our minds, visualize this the storm around you and that it's call that it's calmed to a whisper by God. Third thing is trust in God's timing. We don't understand why that storm happened to them. We don't know what his plan was, except that the ultimate part of his plan was that they recognized who he was, that only God can calm the storm. Again, create a calm environment. How can you do that? I would love for you to comment and tell me, do you already have a calm environment or is this a good prompt for you to create a calm environment in your home? What would it look like? What do you need to do? And then the fourth thing we can always do is write scripture, write scripture. I'm going to say that over and over again. So these pieces will be tucked into our cute little tuck spot. And then that page is done. So I like that one. Well, let's go on to Jeremiah 31. And in this one, I took one of the angled tuck spots. I punched a hole in it and added a uh, eyelet. And then I decided to hang one of these pretty little um, exact same thing I have on there, right? A starfish. Couldn't think of it for a second. So we're going to put that on there, and then I'm going to put my notes in there. So let's go ahead. And this is in the kit, and so it already has the tabs 
on it like that. So all you have to do is just fold them on that line. And we will add that right there. And while that's drying, we will look at Jeremiah 31, 25. So you're getting the theme here. In Jeremiah 31, 25, he says, I will refresh the weary and satisfy the faint. God, God is saying that. Not man, not your boss, not your mother, your father, your parents, your children, nobody. The only person that can refresh the weary and satisfy the faint is God. So in what context is this verse? So it's part of the book of Jeremiah, which is a book of consolation. It's part of the that part of his um, book. Jeremiah is um, very long. He was a prophet. And he delivered messages of hope and restoration to the people of Israel. It is a declaration of God's intention to provide relief and renewal to his people because they're exhausted and worn out from their hardships and exile. As I've mentioned before, I'm doing the Bible in a Year plan with Ascension Press. And I'm worn out just listening to when the kingdom became divided and we have um, Israel and then we have Judah and how king after king after king, one king gets born, reigns for 27 years, and he did not follow the ways of the Lord. He did wicked in the sight of the Lord. And then the next king does the exact same thing. Then occasionally you get a good king who does good things and tries to bring the people back. But then the next king, his child, typically, just takes over and it all falls apart again. So they are, as a culture and as a people and as a place, they are worn out. They've been exiled in that place because of the divided kingdom and they have lots of hardships. So Jeremiah was sent as the prophet to explain to them, come back to me. That's basically his, his message. All the prophets have the same message. Get Stop sinning and come back to me. Let's look at those uh, verses. I will refresh. So basically what that saying is, a refresh is revival, renewal, and restoration. And God promises to reinvigorate those who are exhausted, not just physically exhausted, but emotionally and spiritually exhausted. So that may be you at this time in your life. Maybe you're a new mom with babies and you desperately want to spend time with God, but yeah, good luck with that. That's kind of really tough. You have to actually set an appointment to have time with God. So the next line is satisfy the faint. Okay, that means fulfillment and contentment that God meets the needs of those who are faint. And what is faint? Weak, lacking strength, feeling hopeless. So if you're feeling hopeless, if you have no strength physically or emotionally left, God says, I will refresh you. I will renew you and restore you. And I will satisfy you. Okay, how does this verse speak to rest and relaxation? Well, number one, God's promise, here we go again, of renewal, that he gives us true rest and relaxation. And it comes from his promises, his divine renewal helps us to carry on. Sometimes that's all, that's all it's going to take is, is allowing God to give us that renewal, that we can then carry on and move our foot to the next step, wake up the next day. Number two, this verse speaks to complete satisfaction. It's not temporary. He doesn't bring contentment and peace because the world sure doesn't offer that. Only God does that, and it can be um, permanent. And it also gives us hope and restoration. It reassures us God is actively working to restore us. No matter what our circumstances are, we need to rest on his promises. And then let's look at the application. I wrote on this one of the little cards. Um, you're going to hear me say probably the same things over and over. But this one, I think, uh, is an easy one to say. One of the applications can be, um, when you wake up, begin each day with prayer. Take a few moments before you get out of bed. Give those few moments of your the, the first fruits of your day. Ask him to refresh and renew your spirit. Another way you could apply this is to embrace Sabbath rest. 
Sabbath rest is, God said, he created the world in six days and on the seventh day he rested. And then if you look in the Old Testament, there was lots of rules and regulations that the um, Israelites had to follow, correct? Uh, we don't have that because we're under the new covenant. That was the old covenant. The new covenant is now under Jesus. But that doesn't mean we still can't take that moment and practice Sabbath rest. I have actually been doing that the past couple months. I pick either Saturday or Sunday because it doesn't really matter. But I basically take that time to slow down, stop doing all the million things that I do, and spend time in his word. I go and do some research for my Bible studies. I write out God's word. I do scripture writing. I just relax. I take care of myself for that day. And that's the third way you could apply this is practice self-care. If you are not practicing self-care, you will be worn out. You will be just forget it. You just don't have any energy. So things like nutrition, eating correctly, getting some exercise, getting that sleep, maybe having hobbies or activities that bring you joy and relaxation. So those are some ways to apply Jeremiah 31. 25 and we will stick it in our little pocket and we will say blessings to you i'm going to close today with may the god of hope fill you with all joy and peace as we're talking about as you trust in him so that you may overflow with hope and by the power of the holy spirit and that's romans 15 13. see you in the next video